Now what happens in 19, I want to say, 83, two years after pretty much this investigation has stalled out, is a new, I don't want to say new, because it's really the only suspect emerges. Like the ashes of Pompeii, he comes up and it is none other than Otis Tool. Now Otis Tool is somebody that I'm familiar with. Henry Lee Lucas, I'm familiar with. Those two were a, a tag team of sorts. They were lovers. They were serial killers. They were two very similar rejects that decided to get together and kill. Now, there is a Netflix series, I think, called something, Confession Tapes, Henry Lee Lucas. I watched it a long time ago. And they confessed to over 200 murders. They certainly didn't do over 200 murders. Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toll, especially Henry Lee Lucas, confessed to crimes that he didn't do. And police officers took his word for it. Now, I don't think many of them did it for nefarious reasons as to, hey, let's just close this case. We got a confession. Although there are some that would have done that. They feed them information. I've gone over this. You've seen it in, I believe, the West Memphis 3 case. It's v Now, let me speak from an investigator's standpoint. When you have a case... And it's been unsolved and you've worked it for a long time. You get leads and you're excited and then you're down. And then you're excited because something else comes in and then you just to be let down again. When you get a good lead, somebody confessing, and you go, you want that to be the truth. Okay, you want it to be the truth. So when he starts telling you things about the crime scene and it's right, some of the things are right, you're liking it. And then all of a sudden, they say something wrong. The kid had on pants instead of shorts. Whatever it is. You want to try to get them back on track. Because you want it to be true. So you'll say something like, Well, you said he had pants on. Could it could have been shorts. Now, he's looking at you like, oh, I, I, just, I just messed up. Yeah, it could have been shorts. That simple. And it gets him back on track for the confession. Now, that happens a lot. It's hard as an investigator not to do that. Let's say you don't do that. And he confesses and you get done and you look at it and he got four things right, but he got six things wrong. You take that to your district attorney. If he's any district attorney that's worth anything, he's going to say, well, he, he, you know, he's not the guy, I don't think, but you need to follow back up on some of these questions and, you know, find, find out what the truth is. Well, maybe the guy just did the truth and he's making it up and he, he doesn't know certain things. That happens. Happens a lot. Now you'll sit there and you'll say to yourself, I would never confess to anything I didn't do. Well, great for you. Good. But not everybody's the same. Now Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole would confess, and their reasoning for confessing to crimes they didn't do is because for Henry Lee Lucas, the investigators treated him great. He was treated like shit his whole life. Come from a broken home. Get abused, get a picked on, blah, blah, blah. Had to scrape up quarters and nickels in order to buy a sandwich from the Unimart. And now all of a sudden, these detectives are taking him out of his cell. Giving him cigarettes. Giving him steaks. Burgers. Milkshakes. 
every time because they're happy with him. He's clearing all these cases. If you put yourself in their shoes and you have nothing to live for except for the 8x10 cell that you're in and you're already a convicted murderer and liar, why not do that? And that's what they did. Reminds me of a song. A lot of you guys will never heard of this group. It was David Allen Coe, country western singer, hooking up with members of Pantera, the Abbott Brothers. And I don't remember the name of the band, but they sung a, a song saying, when you got nothing, you got nothing to lose. That's how Otis Tool and Henry Lee Lucas are. So, Otis Tool confesses to killing Adam Walsh. Now, a lot of people know this. And in fact, a few years ago, I think the current police department concurred with this. And they said, we believe Otis Tool was the murderer of Adam Walsh. And in fact, I believe John Walsh and his wife, Reeve, and I don't know if they're still married or not, but they agreed with it. Now, it would be so easy for me to sit here and agree with everything the police have done, everything the police have said, and not go against the victim's family's thought process on that. But I'm not everybody else. I speak the truth, and I give my opinion based on my experience, in my training, in my years of working cold cases, and in fact, I said this before, you're only as good as the people that you surround yourself with. And in solving cold cases, I think you can come up with a great hypothesis, great theories, and have articulate reasonings. But you need those other people beside you who are experts in areas of which you are not. Forensic anthropology, uh, forensic pathology, criminal profiling. Um, those things, all those things, you know, I, I have a little bit of. Like I'm a, uh, I'm a jack of all trades, a master of none, okay? You need those other ones who are the masters around you. I am oftentimes, and I, you know, I'm very humble to say this, but I'm very proud to say it too, is that I'm referred to not only by other people, but my peers as one of the greatest cold case detectives in this country. That has been said, that's been quoted by Dr. Warner Spitz and others. I'm very proud of that, very proud of that. Yet, if you can get with the other people who are recognized as the best in the business, shouldn't we be able to solve these cases? Right? Now, the reason we don't a lot of times is ego. And when things don't match up because I say this and somebody else says this, there's conflict. We butt heads. It shouldn't be like that. We should all be able to express our opinions, our theories, and then even deduce further from that in order to find the truth. Now, the reason I bring all this up is because I disagree with the assertion that Otis Toole committed this crime. And I'm going to get into the reasons why I disagree with that. Couple of, and we're going to look at both sides of things. Why 
he could be and why I don't believe that he is. And then we'll get into who I believe is responsible. 